And then I guess that gave you enormous amounts of confidence after the first one, you've got the planning. First of all, it's a kind of getting the deal agreed, getting the option signed, getting the planning approval, starting the build. All these are massive milestones. And at each point, your confidence level must be growing that actually, okay, this is, this is possible, I can do this. And approaching second, third, fourth sites, much easier at that point? Yeah, do, do you know, I've, I've never had a, I've never had a confidence issue and I've never had a kind of, can I do it kind of thing. I've always had like a high form of self-belief. Mm -hmm. I've always thought, you know, if that's being done, I can do it. It doesn't yeah. matter who it is. And so when I, um, yeah, it was nice validation. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I like. I like to prove things to myself. I'm not yes. really interested in proving things to others or proving people wrong. That's never like, that's never been anything that makes me tick. It's proving myself right. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was good validation, getting the first one. And getting planning permission on that um, helped. But whilst, the, whilst that was in planning, I was out doing other deals. So I wasn't okay. waiting for that to go yes. through. I started doing other deals and then um, cash got tight. Okay. And I had to start taking in more partners. Right. Because I couldn't afford it. Couldn't afford to, you know, planning applications are expensive. Yeah. Best case scenario on a larger deal is, you know, 50 grand. Yeah. That's a fairly cheap one, to be fair. Yeah. These days, I, I'm not really doing anything that's less than 100 grand on a yeah. planning application. So just break that down for somebody that might be listening or understanding, thinking, how can you spend 50 grand on planning? It's crazy. Are architects that expensive? Because there's lots of components. So break that down for us. What? There's lots of components. If I, if, I, if I think about a deal that we're doing right now, we're doing a 220 bed. It's another student accommodation on student accommodation scheme. The architect fees on that must be, you know, so by the way, I've got a few projects, so this is roughly it is. I'm going to say the architect fees on that might be 45, 50,000 pounds. This is for the planning application. This isn't for detailed design and drawings once you get your planning permission. This is just the architect fees, just to get us planning permission. And then you've got to pay for um, all these other reports, like transport report. You've got to pay for ground investigation. You've got to pay for um, planning statement. And there's these various other reports and documents that you've got to put together to support this planning application. Mm -hmm. Might be a, a townscape assessment and some other heritage statements and other reports that you've got to put together. So all these specialties are fees that need to be paid out. Big fees. In order to try and get planning approval. In order just to pull it forward to the council to say, consider it even. Please take a look at my application. Yes. The process is kind of mad when you think about it. It's a very costly and very drawn out process. And it's, it actually can be quite discouraging at times, yeah. to be honest, as a developer, when you're putting a lot of money and time into this and resource into these schemes, it's a bit mad. So it's, you've got to, Obviously, do your due diligence and look at the site, assess it, get get advice, get professional advice in, make sure you, you know, you've got your developer hat and you're working out what other constraints there could be with the site. Every, anything from, you know, in terms of ground risks to uh, development risks to, you know, neighbourly matters like party wall issues, yeah. oversell licence and oversell agreement. So you've got to try and, when you're reviewing a site, just take that all into consideration and do an assessment. And then work out whether it's the plunge, you know, is it worth that, what you've agreed for the land plus that planning risk? You know, obviously if you're going to get, if you're going to take that planning risk, there's got to be a, a nice healthy gain yes. at the point you get planning. Because it is, there's a fair bit of risk you're taking there's, at that there's point. There's a risk. And that's why the, 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 the reward, the uplifting value is so, so high. That's why there's, yeah, that's why there's such a value on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what um, anyone that's doing this needs to make sure that they've allowed enough fat in it to, if you know, if they need to exit at the point they get plan permission, make sure there's enough profit at that stage because yes. that is a lot of work within itself. You know, that's a lot of time. It's not like a, it's not a one month process. It's not a one week process. It's a lot of time and resource to put that together. You want to be able to potentially exit at that point if you need to. And if not, you go on to then take it through to development, which is a whole nother ball game, yes. which is a whole nother ball game yeah. in itself. So before we get on to working with the develop uh, the the builders uh, uh, and building out, um, how have you found the um, the expectations of the the site owners, the building owners, the landowners when you're having conversations with them? Because you're thinking I'm putting a tower here, they're thinking you know this is a, a gold mine I'm potentially sitting on. Have have you found uh, that negotiation everyone, process? Everyone's sitting on a gold mine, aren't they? <laughs> Especially Every, in Birmingham. If they don't want a million, <laughs> they want to. Yeah. Um, it can be, you know, in some areas it can be very challenging. If you're, if you're, if you found a development site in a really hot area, 
and everything else around it is developed, no, there's a 99% chance that landowner is The reason it's not developed is because they want so much money for it. There's a good chance it's that. There's yeah. a good chance they want a lot of money for that site. And so, yes, there's, there's that complexity to it. You want to take that into consideration. But if you can find a site in an area that um, isn't as obvious, that can be a, a good strategy. So one that's uh, potentially already allocated for development, mm -hmm. maybe it's in the SLA, in the local plan from the council, or, um, or you've just spotted it as an opportunity as a site. They, they can be good deals. But again, even where there's... Also, the other thing to take into consideration on that same um, point, to be fair, is sometimes people just miss that site. Mm. That site can be sitting there the whole time. Yeah. Everyone else assumes there's a deal that's been done and it's nothing's been done. Yes. Yeah. And you go and contact that owner and if the flip side does happen mm. and you get a fair, fair price for that, yeah. for that plot of land or whatever the site is. Um, so either way, you just got to try it. Mm. But you do find landowners, the expectations generally can be quite high, especially in a city like Birmingham and mm. central Birmingham. It can be quite challenging. But again, you know, you've got to do, look at multiple deals yeah. and eventually you'll, you'll find something or a few that work. And, you know, just like in normal residential and buy-to-let investment, you've got to pay the right price. Yes. You've got to make sure you're paying the right price going in because that also helps to shelter you against other things that could come up later on, like, you know, inflation construction costs.